Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third annual Aurora Prize Ceremony. I'm David Ignatius, and I've had the pleasure of being your host since the beginning. We all owe our presence here to the vision of the three Aurora co-founders, Vartan Gregorian, Ruben Bardanian, and Nubar Afea. They have given us the opportunity to remember our common humanity and do something about it. We also owe our presence here to the awe-inspiring humanitarians who've been among the 1,494 Aurora nominees and 11 Aurora finalists and laureates of the last three years. Yes, these are very impressive and real numbers describing people who are doing good for the world every day. We will hear from them and meet most of them over this weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dalia Atallah, a recipient of the Amal Cluny Scholarship at United World College Dilijan in Armenia. And I am very honored to be here, David, alongside you, a world-class journalist, writer, and political analyst. But maybe you don't know, but the film I love, The Body of Lies, is based on one of David's thrillers. He's written 10 of them. And you, Dalia, are from Lebanon, a country I fell in love with as a journalist mm -hmm. in 1980, and which has been the setting for several of my novels. Lebanon is also one of the countries of the Middle East that welcomed Armenian refugees escaping the horrors of genocide. My own family, in part, came through Syria, but I feel deep admiration and camaraderie from my brothers and sisters in Burj Hamoud in Lebanon. I'm glad you'll be joining me, Dahlia, on this adventure this weekend, especially since, as an Amal Clooney scholarship recipient, you're a beneficiary of one of the Aurora Gratitude Projects. And, if you'll forgive me, you look a little like Amal Clooney, too. <laughs> We're here today, ladies and gentlemen, because Aurora is about gratitude. It was created on behalf of the survivors of the Armenian Genocide and in gratitude to their saviors. This gratitude is expressed through a variety of innovative projects, each of which facilitates, enables, and empowers action. Aurora has transformed gratitude into action. Ladies and gentlemen, this evening, you will hear about Aurora's accomplishments of this past year. You will, of course, meet this year's finalists, as well as members of the esteemed selection committee, and hear about the game-changing work of the previous year's laureates and finalists. But first, let's remember the woman for whom this prize is named. A good part of this weekend's activities will be dedicated to remembering Aurora Mardiganian, whose real name was Arsha Luis, which means Aurora, the dawn. We recall her journey as a teenage refugee and her legacy as the conscience of a generation. In her spirit, the Aurora Prize for Awakening Humanity transforms the Armenian victim into the Armenian and global humanitarian, ready to offer support to those who come to the aid of the world's most vulnerable, as a people in this way, we are looking forward, not backward. Here is the short film by Eric Nazarian, a flight of fancy through Armenian history and Aurora's personal history with music by Serge Tankian. It's no wonder that it has become the Aurora opening tradition. Armenia, the land of Noah. For millennia, Armenians created an ancient civilization of builders, healers, scientists, and storytellers at the crossroads of world cultures. They survived conquests and empires, contributed to trade, art, literature, and science, becoming a truly global people.
in 1915, under the cover of the Great War, one and a half million Armenians perished from their ancient homeland, along with their culture and way of life. This was a genocide perpetrated by the Ottoman Empire against its own citizens. Across the four corners of the globe, men, women, and children fled, seeking shelter and a life of peace. They were determined and resilient. The fortunate ones were saved by unsung heroes who risked their lives. Among the saved children was Aurora Martiganyan, an orphaned 17-year-old survivor of the atrocities. She became the star of Ravished Armenia, the first major motion picture produced in Hollywood about the genocide. Based on her autobiography, Aurora was cast in the starring role, reenacting the trauma of her young life and telling the story of her people. The film premiered to sold out audiences in Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and more than 100 cities across the United States, the United Kingdom, France, and Australia. Aurora's autobiography sold several hundreds of thousands of copies. She became an international phenomenon during the silent film era, a symbol of survival, goodwill, and the devastation of the genocide. She was the icon of philanthropic aid for the survivors. In 1919, the monumental success of Ravished Armenia raised international awareness and $30 million for 60,000 orphans in the Near East. To this day, Aurora remains a testament to the living memory of the genocide and the gratitude of the Armenian people to their saviors. True to her name, Aurora became the symbol of light and hope for an entire generation. Those who survived and resisted the genocide, like Aurora, were scattered around the world and persevered. They rebuilt their lives and communities with dignity, ever grateful to the Samaritans who rescued their families. Men and women like Jacob Kunzler, Bodil Bjorn, Maria Jacobson, Fritjof Nansen, and so many others put their lives at risk to heal and protect the refugees and survivors. The world today faces man-made disasters not unlike those of a century ago. Every day, heroes worldwide answer the call of human duty. These rare and brave men and women are among us. They are our neighbors. They are the strangers on the streets we pass. They work in the far corners of the world, saving lives with open hearts. On behalf of the survivors of the Armenian Genocide and in gratitude to their saviors, the Aurora Prize for Awakening Humanity honors the power of the human spirit that compels action in the face of adversity. Anyone, anywhere in the world is eligible for the prize. We salute those who dedicate their lives to enabling others to live and make a difference. That's the third time that I have seen that film, and each time it's more powerful. Since the Aurora Initiative is now three years old, we decided to shape this year's award ceremony as a trilogy. On April 24th this year, the world learned the names of the three Aurora 2018 nominees. Today, we look forward to seeing them all on this stage. Today's celebration of heroes is the first part of the trilogy. The second part of the trilogy will focus on the announcement of the Aurora Laureate. It will take place tomorrow at Aurora, the dawn, adjacent to the Khor Virap Monastery at the foot of Mount Ararat, 
where Noah landed his ark and infused humanity with new hope, with a second chance. This mountain appears first in the Old Testament and is revered by all of the religions of this region. The Chorvirat Monastery is the birthplace of Armenia's Christian faith. It is the closest point to the ancient Armenian lands from which Armenians were deported during the genocide 100 years ago. And the final part of this ceremony, rounding up the trilogy, will be a gala concert celebrating survival at the Yerevan Opera and Ballet Theater. There, we will honor the 2018 laureate. During this year, as the Aurora Prize machine moved smoothly to solicit nominations, vet them, shortlist them, and bring them to us today, lots of other work was going on. The Aurora Dialogues took place in Berlin, New York, and Moscow. The Aurora Humanitarian Index was launched for the third year, this time in London. And the organizations that Aurora supports at the request of the laureates of the last two years, these organizations have extended their reach globally to help and support people from all over the world who, despite everything, keep proving that humanity is still worth believing in and that an ordinary person can become a real hero. Here is a brief report on the achievements of the Aurora Humanitarian Initiative. The Aurora Humanitarian Index tells us that the risk of war and terrorism are perceived to be the most pressing global humanitarian challenges in all continents. In that world, the Aurora Humanitarian Initiative continues to provide support to those on the ground putting themselves at risk while helping those in the greatest need and expanding the Aurora impact around the world. Three Armenians co-founded the Aurora Humanitarian Initiative and launched it on March 10, 2015 in New York. They did so on behalf of the survivors of the Armenian Genocide and in gratitude to their saviors. The 100 Lives Project. The initiative was launched with the 100 Lives Project, intended to express gratitude for the benevolent intervention of institutions and individuals, often strangers, who helped Armenians to survive the genocide. 100 Lives shared more than 300 stories of Armenian genocide survivors, their saviors, and their descendants in six languages. These stories raised awareness about the Armenian experience and highlighting need to take action today to support modern day saviors. Based on this content, a series of special artistic events were organized in collaboration with Marina Alz in Gyumri, Tbilisi, and St. Petersburg to reinforce and advance 100 Lives mission, to celebrate those who helped Armenians in need 100 years ago, and to continue in their spirit by supporting people and organizations that keep the legacy of gratitude alive. The Aurora Prize. Inspired by these stories, Aurora wanted to transform Armenians' gratitude into action by celebrating and supporting the heroic actions of today's heroes and saviors. And so, the Aurora Prize for Awakening Humanity was established. Over three years, 1,494 nominations have been made in 13 languages for 876 unique candidates from 115 countries. These nominations have been evaluated by 22 professionals and leaders of humanitarian and civil society organizations and presented for the selection committee's consideration. Marguerite. The committee which selects the annual Aurora Prize finalists and laureate is comprised of 12 humanitarians, human rights activists, Nobel Peace Prize laureates, and former heads of state, and is chaired by Academy Award-winning actor and philanthropist George Clooney. Since its inception, the Aurora Prize Selection Committee has shortlisted 11 humanitarians for the prize and chosen two laureates for their exceptional impact, commitment, and courage. The 2016 and 2017 laureates, Marguerite Barankitze and Dr. Tom Katina, have together nominated six organizations that inspired their work to share $2 million in awards. Aurora thus continues the cycle of giving and expands invaluable and essential humanitarian work around the world. Today, 19 projects in 14 countries benefit from this largesse, impacting the lives of thousands of people in Africa, Latin America, and the Middle East. June 10th is the day that the 2018 Aurora Prize Laureate is announced. Gratitude Scholarships. 
the descendants of the survivors of the Armenian Genocide seek to express gratitude to those who helped save the victims of the genocide by supporting educational initiatives and providing scholarships. A hundred academic scholarships are given to at-risk youth from the Middle East who have been affected by conflict, displacement, and poverty. The scholarship program runs between 2015 and 2023. To date, 31 students from nine countries have benefited from an education within the internationally acclaimed United World College Network of Schools and at the American University of Armenia. The scholarship program is valued at $7 million. Aurora Humanitarian Initiative provided grants to humanitarian projects and promoting public awareness of humanitarian efforts, helping to solve some of the most pressing humanitarian challenges in the world. My name is Ilani. I am 17 years old. I live in Jerusalem. I'm a Palestinian refugee. I live in Lebanon. I'm originally from Sudan. My name is Dalia Atala, and I am from Lebanon. Soon, Aurora will launch the Vartan Gregorian Scholarship, seeking to inspire young scholars and researchers to study the Armenian experience of the 20th century. Aurora Engagement. Aurora actively invests and promotes efforts to preserve and promote Armenian culture and heritage. Various institutions have received more than $200,000 to date in support. From 2016 to 2018, 7,567 volunteers have expressed a desire to get involved in preparations of Aurora Prize Weekends. Aurora Humanitarian Initiative has invited talents to present their ideas and vision about gratitude and humanitarian action. Some 3,000 photographers, directors, writers, and young artists from more than 50 countries participated in this global humanitarian movement. Dozens of artists, performers, researchers, media celebrities, humanitarian and business leaders presented Aurora's mission and ideas within their communities. Many of them attended one or more of the seven Aurora Dialogues held in six major cities around the world. Media outlets around the world published over 1,500 articles and stories covering the Aurora Prize and the projects of the initiative. The Aurora Prize social media channels reached over 69 million people. Contributors and Partners The Aurora Humanitarian Initiative was founded by three people committed to honoring the memory of the survivors of the genocide by supporting projects that honor their saviors. Since that time, more than 300 individuals and organizations have been inspired to join the founders in transforming a nation's gratitude to action. Over $40 million has been spent to implement the programs of the Aurora Humanitarian Initiative. Around 10 million came as contributions by generous supporters of Aurora. The rest was donated by the co-founders. The Aurora Humanitarian Initiative is transforming the Armenian experience into a global movement committed to inspiring everyone to respect and cherish our common humanity. Aurora's impact has reached all continents. The awareness about Aurora is increasing over the years, and those around the world who have heard about the initiative have positive attitudes towards it. With this positive impact, we believe that empowering individuals who save lives, despite great personal risk, offers hope to those in need and inspires global humanitarian action. Join Aurora and support modern day heroes giving life and hope to those with the most urgent humanitarian needs. Just, <clears throat> just uh, as there are these amazing achievements of Aurora, there are the achievements of the Aurora Prize laureates as well. Please welcome to the stage the first Aurora laureate, the woman who has saved thousands of children and cared for orphans and refugees who suffer from the war, the civil war in Burundi, Marguerite Barankitze. So, welcome, my my dear uh, Maggie. Uh, this is the third year that you and I have seen each other, that you've been on this stage. Uh, I'd like to ask you just to share with this audience how your life and work has changed since you were given this Aurora Award. Thank you, good evening. When I freed my country in June 2015, 
the government decided I, I was on the list as a criminal. And I have no country, no money. I was with 100,000 refugees in Rwanda. Without hope, we lost our identity, our dignity, and Aurora Prize in 2016 came as like a hand of God to tell me, don't be afraid. Our suffering were transformed in hope, dignity, love. And we celebrate together when the refugees in refugee camp uh, know that this award was a sign of hope, love, and Thank dignity. You. Thank you very much, Marguerite. Thank you very much. <laughs> Instead of returning to your seat, please take a seat here on stage. These five chairs are for five of the most amazing human beings, those whose daily mission it is to make the world a better place than they found it. And now, please welcome a man who lives in a country in a state of civil war, Catholic missionary and physician. Tom Katina is the only surgeon in Sudan's Nuba Mountains. He doesn't just change lives, he saves them. Those who know him and love him, just call him Dr. Tom. Just seeing his face yesterday when I arrived here brought a smile to my face. Dr. Tom is the 2017 Aurora Laureate Please welcome Dr. Tom Katina. Nice to see you. Uh, Dr. Tom, um, in a world that uh, has as much suffering as, as this, uh, just being proud of your work as we all are isn't enough. And I want to ask you, uh, you'll return to that world soon. Um, what are the things that we should think about doing? What are the things that you'll be doing? Uh, what's the pathway that you see for making this a better world? Yeah, thank you, David. Good evening, everybody. Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe you guys look at me as being somebody big or important or somebody with a lot of abilities. Uh, I want to debuse you, just uh, whatever the word is. I want to say I'm not, okay? I'm an, I'm an average person. And uh, don't, don't look at me as somebody that, that only I can do these kind of things, or the other honorees or Maggie are the only people that can do these kind of things. These are, we do normal things, okay? The only thing maybe we have is some perseverance. Anybody can do what we're doing. So I think my message is I wanna encourage anybody, especially the young people, uh, take courage, take heart. You can do anything uh, to help other people. It doesn't take big grand gestures. Bite off small amounts of pie and, and take care of that one. Uh, probably the only message I'd like to uh, leave with you, perhaps, is uh, there's an incredible amount of suffering in the world. Uh, where we are in Sudan, it's, it's in our face every day. Uh, it's hunger, it's, it's, it's war, it's, it's strife. It never seems to go away. So uh, despite all this, don't be afraid uh, to accept some suffering. Take it upon yourself to accept some of that suffering to help somebody else. You'll find that the rewards of doing that outweigh uh, any negativity. So I think that's the only thing I want to say to you, and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the ceremony. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Tom, and uh, thank you for taking your seat on stage nec next to Maggie. It's worth remembering that these laureates are part of a class of superheroes, together with the finalists of years past, who are also fearless, committed, and indomitable. Let's honor them again, and by reciting their names, recommit to supporting their work and the work of their brothers and sisters around the world. Let me ask those who are here to stand, and there are others who could not join us, I'll name also. From 2016, in addition to Marguerite Barankitsa, Father Bernard Kinby is here. If he could please stand. 
Saeed Ghulam Fatima is here. From 2017, in addition to Dr. Tom, Dr. Dennis Mukweje, Mohammed Darwish, mother and daughter Fartoun Adan and Ilwad Elman, and Jamila Afghani, who's here. These wonderful people and this year's three finalists, who will be occupying those chairs in a moment, uh, were selected by the 12 members of the Aurora Selection Committee. These esteemed individuals on the Selection Committee are former heads of state, Nobel laureates, and change makers. Each year, this board has had a very hard choice to make. They've had to choose from hundreds of extraordinary people from all over the world. Please welcome to the stage Mary Robinson, the former United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights and the former President of Ireland. For my generation, President Robinson, you are an inspiration. the Aurora Humanitarian Initiative evolve. Over the last three years, my colleagues on the Election Committee and I have had to work very hard to keep up with the passion and energy of the co founders We've had to work even harder to select the few individuals and laureates. Just look at the numbers. We received 750 nominations from all over the world for this year's Aurora Awards, which is 509 unique candidates from 155 countries. The number of candidates has nearly doubled this year as compared with the previous year. And those of us in the humanitarian community deal with a fundamental challenge every day. As deep and widespread as are the crises, equally profound and fundamental are the uh, people's commitment to improving their lives and helping those that they can reach. And we need to get these stories out to inspire and to rally for collective action and policy change. So let me take a moment to tell you a story about my own people, um, the Irish people. In the 19th century, the Irish people suffered a terrible famine. It began in 1845 when the potato crop failed. And the potato crop wasn't just a food, it was the only food, largely, of the peasants in Ireland at the time. And it failed again in 1846. People were moving to workhouses, people were dying, and people were leaving on what they called the coffin ships to Britain, to the United States, to Canada, to Australia. In 1847, the situation was absolutely desperate. And meanwhile, in the spring of 1847, in March 1847, the Choctaw Indian tribe came together in Oklahoma to mark 10 years from when they had been driven from their tribal lands, going through what they call the Veil of Tears. And we're not quite sure how they learned that on an island far away, about three million people were starving. It probably was something like a passing priest who told them. And the Choctaw people raised $173 for the relief of Irish famine victims whom they had never met, had no connection with, but they understood that if a stable crop fails, people get hungry, and if it fails another year, they get even hungrier, and they could not bear to think of uh, an island where people would be starving. So they sent the $173 to Ireland, and we know that it was received by the Victorian administrators of my country at that time, who were very good bookkeepers, and we know that it was actually spent um, for the relief of famine victims. So, 150 years later, in March 1997, I had the honor, as President of Ireland, of going to Oklahoma to thank the Choctaw people, because it's important that we remember these stories, that we remember this history. And actually, shortly afterwards, I became UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, and that story served me very well, because I discovered, apart from being UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, I was also the coordinator of the Decade of Indigenous Peoples, 400 million Indigenous Peoples worldwide. 
And when I went to my first meeting, um, the UN gave me this script that I couldn't even understand myself, full of acronyms that I didn't know what they meant, and I couldn't possibly use it. So I told that story, and that story resonated with the indigenous people I was talking to and helped me greatly in my work. And it is important, it really is important that we tell the stories and that we understand that the true humanitarian spirit is one of compassion and empathy with no self-interest, no self-regard, just the generosity of caring about the other, caring about the other human being. And Aurora has really inspired us all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mary Robinson, for that uh, moving story about gratitude in action and for everything that you do and that you are. This applause is for all of the members of the selection committee. Please stand. George Clooney. <laughs> Vartan Gregorian. <laughs> Leigh McBowie. Gareth Evans. Shireen Ibadi, Ernesto Zedillo, Samantha Power, Bernard Kushner, Hina Gilani, Ara Garzi, Oscar Arias, and Mary Robinson. We will now meet the 2018 Aurora finalists that the selection committee reviewed. Let me tell you first that one of them is from India, another from Myanmar, and a third from Mexico. I suggest you prepare to use your interpretation equipment, which was on your chair when you sat down. It will come in handy unless you speak Burmese and Spanish. Now, let us introduce the three 2018 Aurora finalists. But in order for Aurora to do what it does, and in order for each of these finalists and the laureate to have impact in their work, they need very concrete, significant financial support. Aurora is grateful that the number of donors is growing. Today, each finalist will receive their Aurora medal from one of these generous supporters. The names of the finalists were announced here in Yerevan on April 24, on the day that the genocide was being commemorated. Aurora, in this way, also reminded the world that the survivors, no longer victims, are also giving back to the humanitarian community that was there for them a hundred years ago. This film will introduce the first finalist. Rohingya Muslims have lived in the United States since 11th century. But since 1982, the government do not want to accept Rohingya people as an ethnic group. They don't issue citizenship to us. They say that we are illegal immigrants from Bangladesh. They try to call us Bengali, but we are not from Bangladesh. We doesn't want to give this land to Bangladesh. We want to live under this Burmese government under law and order. Rohingya people is one of the most persecuted minorities in the world. The Rakhine extremists attack us, but the authorities do not take any action. Our people are rejected to apply for the job, for education, and for health care. We cannot travel anywhere without permission. Now we cannot vote. So what is the law? Where is the law? discrimination as we are Muslim. So I started to fight for the rights of my people. I am the only Rohingya lawyer in this area who can complain to the authorities and who can inform other countries. So the authorities are not to be satisfied with me. In total, I spent more than 10 years in prison. I am a lawyer, but now the law and order is not for us. Yeah, you can see there are very bad condition. Uh, for this uh, three years, uh, no job, no nothing uh, to eat. 
we formed a committee to purchase rice and distribute it to the very poor. I also started to provide education to our children and elderly people. We also appointed nearly 110 teachers and more than 10,000 children are also getting the education. The new crisis broke out in August 2017 in Northern Rakhine State. Thousands of Rohingya people lost their lives. Many drowned fleeing. It was the biggest exodus of Rohingya people from Myanmar. More than half of the population now live in refugee camps. The situation is still very tense. In Somnia, our relations are also there. But we cannot go and see a support to them, provide anything to them. Bit by bit, they are doing such things for genocide. I don't want to leave my land. I am encouraging my people to stay here. I have faith that one day we will achieve our rights. So <clears throat> we invite to the stage uh, the uh, gentleman you just saw in that film, Mr. Cho La Aung, uh, and we thank him uh, for everything that he, he does. And we invite also our honored guest and donor, Mr. Michael Kavukjan, uh, for the official medal award presentation. So uh, we thank you, Mr. Mr. Cho, for all that you do. You and the Rohingya people, uh, as we saw in that uh, film, uh, have been in the news uh, because of your suffering. Uh, and although we think we understand the challenges that you face, I, I'm sure we don't understand the daily setbacks. For example, this is monsoon season, uh, and one million refugees are along your borders. Perhaps you could tell this audience how we can help in that problem. Thank you. Welcome. We cannot go there to the border. We cannot move anywhere. So, but I am getting information from my some colleague near the border. So, they are suffering more and for food and shelters they need. So UN and some donation countries are also donating there. So I request Armenian people to consider for this IDPs uh, more and more in future and also to recognize these people as our Myanmar people, not from other country. So I request all this and to give pressure to make peacefully to receive all these IDPs as it was they lived in their own land. Thank this you. Is my Thank you, Mr. Cho. Mr. Kavukchan, would you like to say anything? to say a, a quick word as to how I became involved in Aurora and what it means to me, if I may. Uh, uh, I became involved when Ruben first asked me uh, to set up the international legal structure for this humanitarian initiative that he had conceived with uh, Nubar and Vartan. And it's amazing to me that just four years later, it's grown into this fantastic organization that supported people like you. So it's a, my privilege and honor yeah. to present this medal to you. So, uh, our, our thanks to uh, Mr. Cho, our, our first finalist. Um, if you could take your seat next to Dr. Tom, uh, and we'll continue with our program. Thank you. Dear friends, now it is time to meet the second of three finalists on video. Thank you very much. The 
most transformative part of my journey was being gang raped at the age of 15. Um, I think that changed my life in many ways. What bothers me is the fact that I was treated as a criminal by the society. There was so much exclusion that I was subjected to for a crime that I had not committed at all. That anger drove me into believing that I want to commit my life. I want to commit every breath in my being for somebody who's going through a situation like mine. In India, hundreds of sex crimes are committed every day. The government estimates that there are around two to three million children and women in sex slavery, which actually means that the numbers could be anything between 15 to 18 million. धमकी देने के बाद में बाद में वो लोग को बात सुन के आई आई तो तीन दिन का रास्ता है वो लोग अच्छा से खा ले रही पी ले रही मेरे को कुछ भी नहीं दे रही तो मैं रो रही तो मैं मजबूर हो के हाँ बोली हाँ बोली तो जब मैं क्या करूँ ऐसे ऐसे करके वो लोग के मेरे को सीधा नहीं नहीं करेगा तो बेले से काट देती गदन काटती uh, to rehabilitation and reintegration. We are involved in all aspects of anti-trafficking. We also do a lot of work in prevention. The most important thing is to prevent second generation prostitution by providing educational opportunities to children of women in prostitution. We enter brothels and rescue our children and women out of uh, sex slavery. Today, even seeing a three, three and a half year old child being sold into a brothel is not very surprising. That to me is very, very scary. So rescue per se is very, very dramatic act. What is more challenging is the rehabilitation. How much time does it take? I don't know because every victim is unique. Somebody takes a day's time, somebody takes a week's time, somebody might take a couple of years time to come to this recognition. Today, my girls have come a long way. Thousands of them have gone back to the society. They are living a very, very dignified life. Thousands of them have gotten married. Young women are trained here as builders, welders, carpenters, all of them in viable economic option. In 2015, I received two rape videos on WhatsApp. It was shocking, to say the least. I exposed the faces of the rapists, requesting the public to support me to find these sex offenders. There were thousands of rape videos in circulation. Is there a day when all this will end? I do believe, yes, this will end. That is my mission. My mission in life is to end sex slavery from this world. And we welcome on stage Ms. Sunita Krishnan, the second finalist of Aura 2018 Awards, and our honored guest and donor, Mr. Sergei Ambartsumyan, for the presentation of the official medal. Thank you very much, Ms. Sunita, for all that you do. I am awed at your ability to take the most horrid of crimes and turn it into a rallying cry for change. How do you do that every single day? Um, I'm the voice of uh, hundreds and thousands of survivors of sex crime across the world. And I can only say that each one of us have extraordinary capacity to harness the excruciating pain and anger that we have inside us to a very powerful force that can move the world, change the world. We need to make a choice to believe that we are not broken. We need to make a choice to believe that the, the power and the strength that we have harnessed through our pain and anger is our soulmate, our confidant, and our weapon that helps us survive in this world. 
Thank you very much. Sunita, please accept this applause and take your seat uh, in the chair uh, with your uh, medal. Дорогие друзья, для меня громадная честь присутствовать на этом мероприятии и быть с вами. Я хотел поблагодарить бы моих друзей за то, что они пригласили, чтобы я участвовал с первого дня в Авроре в гуманитарной миссии Аврора. К сожалению, надо констатировать, что мы находимся в другом конце где уже есть бедствующие, где нужно помогать этим бедствующим, и их становится все больше и больше. И больше надо констатировать, что все эти проблемы создают люди. Насколько я жизнь понимаю, самые агрессивные и непонятно ведущие себя животные – это люди. И Жизнь показывает, что мы благополучно, к сожалению, идем к тому, что мы завершим самоистребление. Я помню землетрясение, я помню землетрясение в Армении в 1988 году, когда весь мир в одном порыве помог армянскому народу становиться на ноги. Особенно Советский Союз, премьер-министр которого там назывался председатель Советского директ... Совета Министров, сидел практически в зоне бедствия, и весь свой офис и весь свой коллектив перевел в Ленакан. Я хочу поблагодарить всех, кто в 1988 году помог Армении. Но я это вспомнил не потому, что все такие большие и великие нам очень помогли. Из землетрясений и помощи, которая была, я помню одну фразу, что из Лондона один мальчик, который получил от матери... Один фунт или два фунта в этот день не пообедал, и эти деньги прислал в Армению такому же мальчику, чтобы его покормили бы. Я бы хотел бы поблагодарить этого мальчика. Предполагаю, что этот мальчик сегодня великий донор проблемных вопросов, которые он решает. Вот сегодня мы занимаемся этим, и очень хотелось бы, чтобы проблем у людей не было. Очень многие и практически по всему миру Говорят, что красота спасет мир. Мне кажется, что Аврора Прайс пробует показать, что доброта спасет мир. И красота есть просто небольшой частью вот этой доброты. Давайте будем добрыми, будем друг другу помогать и агитировать, чтобы таких проблем не было. Спасибо вам всем благодарю. And dear friends, now it is time to meet our third finalist on video. Okay. Este proyecto de la Casa del Migrante es recibir a la gente más vulnerable de la región, a los pobres. Que el denominador común es que son pobres que han tenido que salir de sus países por razones económicas o por la violencia criminal que hay ahora en Centroamérica. Recuerdo una tarde de que salí, venía llegando del trabajo. Mi esposa estaba llorando y lo único que me repetía una y otra vez era vámonos, vámonos, tenemos que irnos, vámonos. Realmente había llegado un hombre extraño, bueno, llegaron varios hombres. Realmente le dijeron de que si yo no me unía a ellos, que o a ella le iban a matar y también iban a matar al niño. La gente está atrapada en el sur de México, no pueden salir. Si salen a las carreteras, está migración con la Policía Federal fuertemente armada, esperándolos. Si se van en el tren, se van a enfrentar con el crimen organizado. Me trepé en la noche al tren. Y seguí hasta Chontalpa. Allá saltaron el tren ese día. Paron de 8 a 10 hombres, treparon ahí. ¡Viva la América! ¡La América! Y en algunas partes del país, los cárteles de la droga los secuestran o no pueden pagar los cárteles a sus familias, los matan. 
en agosto de 2010 aparecieron 72 cuerpos de personas migrantes masacradas en, en San Fernando, Tamaulipas. Cuando viene la masacre de los 72, se descubre lo que está pasando en México. Entonces, nosotros acá en el sur tomamos como, como nombre número, el número de los 72. ¿no? Nuestra primera de trabajo es la asistencia humanitaria. Damos, ofrecemos comida, ofrecemos hospedaje, ofrecemos servicios de salud. Muchos de ellos vienen con las plantas de los pies deshechas por las grandes caminatas o con dolores musculares, dolores de cabeza por el sol, la caminata, en fin. Y sin exagerar, yo creo que esta gente sufre el Via Crucis como lo sufrió Jesús. Y cada golpe que les da migración, cada humillación que les da a la sociedad mexicana xenófoba, cada extorsión de parte de las autoridades migratorias es un clavo, es un golpe que le dan a esta gente. Y son la imagen de Jesús crucificado. Están malditos, lo dice Dios. Quien agarra un arma, quien diseña una estrategia, una política migratoria para hacer morir a un inocente que lo único que quiere es caminar, atravesar un país para llegar a trabajar y tener una vida digna, eso es una maldición. Eso no puede ser una bendición. Before I uh, call uh, Father Hector to the stage, I want to just thank again Mr. Humbat Sumian uh, for his remarks a moment ago. Uh, if you don't uh, understand Russian, you may not have heard him talk about Gumri uh, and Spitak. He's also the owner of the Alexander Hotel, which has made an enormous gift to, to this conference. Now we welcome to the stage uh, Father Hector Tomas Gonzalez Castillo, the third finalist of the 2018 Aurora Awards, and our honored guest and donor, uh, Mr. Norer Tevanyan, uh, for the presentation of the official medal. Please, uh, if you join us on stage. So uh, we thank you, Father Tomas, uh, for all that you do. Uh, your work truly is God's work. Uh, and yet every day you must deal with the vices of men. And I want to ask uh, what sustains you in this difficult and important work that you do every day? Me impulsa el saber que la muerte no tiene la última palabra. El tener la profunda convicción de que mientras haya un muro levantado, una frontera cerrada, una parte de la sociedad que humilla y discrimina a seres humanos que solamente quieren vivir dignamente, Yo y todos los que estamos aquí tenemos que trabajar por la dignidad de estos seres humanos. Uh, our thanks to uh, Father Tomás uh, and uh, Mr. Tavanya. Muchas gracias, товарищи. Хотя я из России, ну я буду извиниться и говорить на армянском. Ну и на армянском лучше получится. Sveli <laughs> Aurora Marta Sirakan Nahadzevnchan, Himna Dirneri, Yevke Kavarneri, Ivan Skatsovneri Masin, 
Համայրակեսին <gülüyor> Ruben Vartanyani, Baron Rubeni Hisunamiaki, Kabak Tuchamp, Yep Furcheta in Zever, Chikara Sank Vokchuni Hosker, Baja Gacharer, Asetsi Rubenjan, Chinajan Pratakola in Kafigoria Chipa Skanerek, Asetsi Baron Rubenasi, Eskis Gidis Inchemozuma Sem, Asets Inch, Worver Hima Dimelu and Yerikine Maselu, Aremata hai groh hraparaga khos banastez gat siamanto is gidem bolor hai re giden ye thema in shat hama hunche bolor bolor darsa hazari na urta sin tvagani chagas panchan zoherits meka na asela spisi barer hamozadem shaderet gidek nor panch pidasem asel. Yes, Yerkelo bidi mernim. Da asla siamanton, da grakan, da skam maganum ne, an azgaun yete chems kalum adom yerjanyan gam erjanyan tarbere gerbum. Hima uzmem zez yerekin dime muasem hedeval koskere jo urjan. Tu kertu mek, tu kertelu yek. Uder şat şat yerkar petki abrek. Şuna kalç. Thank you very much, Mr. Noray. So now we understand and appreciate even more the selection committee's dilemma. We all understand that even though only one will become the laureate, they are all heroes. Mary Robinson reminded us that compassion and gratitude are fine but action is better. It is that concept of gratitude and action that Aurora embodies. As I read your names, we ask the representatives of all eight charitable organizations named by our finalists to stand. These are the organizations that will benefit from the $1 million that the laureate receives and designates. Please welcome the representatives of Doctors Without Borders, the Medical Relief Society of Malaysia, the International Catholic Migration Commission, Prajwala, No Trafficking in Human Beings and Oppression of Women and Children, Sunlap, Oasis of San Juan de Dios, and the Agroecology School of U Yitzka'an. Everyone standing, please accept our applause, gratitude, and respect. Finally, those who have followed these Aurora ceremonies in the past know that Aurora concludes with the rousing delivery by the chansonnier of the century, the incomparable Charles Aznavour. Aurora has been fortunate, and the world has too, to be serenaded by this wonderful man and his enveloping voice. Today, although he's not physically here, we will welcome him regardless. And through him, remember and honor the people of Gyumri and Spitak, the Armenian cities in the north, which suffered immensely exactly 30 years ago as the result of a terrible earthquake. The earthquake was horrendous, but the outpouring of compassion, aid, and support was unprecedented. From Russia to the US, all of Europe, the former Soviet republics, South America and the Middle East, everyone 
came to Armenia's aid. The power of solidarity through giving, that has not stopped. So, in the first part of our Aurora 2018 trilogy celebration, we would like to thank someone who embodies this. Mr. Mikhail Kosnirovich, an Aurora partner, donor, and friend, is embarking on a project that will bring joy to the children of Gyumri and revenue to the region. He is donating world-class rides and attractions for the new friendship park to be built in Gyumri as a partnership between the IDEA Foundation and donors around the world. This will be a component of the city's rebirth, a new place to build memories of a happy childhood for all children from Armenia and the region, and of course, through Mr. Kusnirovich, of the close friendship between Armenia and Russia. We want to say thank you to all donors, supporters, and friends of the Aurora Prize for awakening humanity. This ceremony continues tomorrow at an Aurora ceremony greeting the sunrise at Khor Virap, where the name of the 2018 laureate will be announced. And tomorrow evening, the trilogy concludes at the Yerevan Opera and Ballet Theater for the final gala concert. So, to conclude, we do, in fact, have a virtual Charles Aznavour. This same beloved man created an important NGO to support the people of Gyumri and Spitak, Aznavour pour l'Armenie. Here he is on video performing the song he wrote and orchestrated with his artist friends and colleagues 30 years ago in support of Armenia and the 1988 earthquake victims. December 1988. It is 11h41 en terre d'Arménie. 45 secondes plus tard, 25 000 orphelins.
Merci, Charles. Dear friends, today we have celebrated the finalists of the 2018 Aurora Award together with Dahlia Atala. And David Ignatius. And now we invite all of you to the dinner reception and remind you again that tomorrow, with a 3 a.m. departure uh, to Khorvirap, we will witness the sunrise and the announcement of the 2018 Aurora Laureate. We expect a spirit-lifting, eye-opening, soul-searching sunrise program. And if there are people who for some reason prefer to sleep at that time, we will see you tomorrow evening at the Yerevan Opera and Ballet Theater. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.